All right, let's hit it off. Um, hello, my name is Aaron. Um, I'm a CTO and founding partner of Outlier Ventures. Um, you might wonder what's a venture capitalist uh, doing here. Well, it's because we work very intensively with our portfolio, with uh, technology, um, with an internal technology team, with uh, teams of our portfolio um, to, uh, well, advise them, help them out, and uh, uh, even build on their tech. So uh, we're quite close to all of the portfolio. And um, today we'll uh, do a workshop on uh, attracting developers to this whole space of Web3 um, technology. Um, I like it to keep it nice and interactive, of course. It's a workshop after all. Um, I'm going to do a quick uh, talk just to you know, set the stage and give some of my ideas. And um, then I'd like to uh, split up, decentralize, if you will, um, to uh, work on some uh, idea sharing and uh, uh, gathering some best practices, uh, key examples and challenges maybe from your own uh, practice. Um, and then we'll sync up again um, uh, from each group. Someone will present to the wider uh, workshop audience. Um, we'll, uh, we'll summarize and then we will uh, spread out again and enjoy the rest of the summit. All right, um, as you might have seen, I have some challenges with the clicker, so I think I have to sort of move close to that laptop if I want to do the next slide. Oh, this works. <laughs> All right, well, boot it up, we've done that. Um, so, Outlier Venture, we do venture capital for the decentralized future. Uh, we work in, uh, really intensively with our portfolio. Um, around the, uh, our investment thesis called the Convergence Ecosystem, which is um, around Web3 and decentralization technologies, um, but combined with things like machine learning, Internet of Things, how they come together, how data streams through that whole system, how you can value that, how you can uh, trade that, um, how you have markets on top of that. Um, we make our investments strategically around this stack um, so that they also uh, have nice synergies between them. Um, some of our investments are these. Um, IOTA, Fetch.ai, Hyan Networks, they're over here as well. Ocean Protocol, of course, you, uh, you know. Uh, Sovereign, Seed, about conversational user interfaces. So each of these uh, fits like in one or, or a few areas of that uh, convergence stack. Now that's enough about me and us. Well, me, myself, I have a technical background. Um, I've been building software for uh, most of my uh, professional, well, all of my professional career. And uh, four years ago, I... Uh, uh, Learned about blockchain and never, uh, never looked back. Really, um, protocols. So, with all of these tokenized protocols popping up and all of these technologies popping up, um, I see them really as as building blocks, building blocks to uh, to build applications, building blocks that can interact with each other. Um, but ultimately, they're only as useful as the things being built on top of them and being available for users. It's nice that you have all this infrastructure technology, but you need apps. And it's nice that you have all these apps, but you need a good infrastructure um, to, to support it. Um, but ultimately, what, what the user experiences is, and is only the app, is only the service that they get. Um, right now, we haven't seen much end-user uh, applications yet, and people are building a lot of infrastructure. But for all of those, you need great developers. So I think attracting talented developers to this Web3 space is, is paramount. It's very important and it will stay important. There's a, very, there's a great shortage of talent. Everybody has trouble attracting great developers. Um, so how are we going to do that? Um, you might remember this video, Steve Ballmer. Developers, developers, developers. That's what we need. That's what I think we need. Um, so. In my mind, I think th these are a few things that are important to, to attract great developers. Of course, you need a great technical foundation of your, of your technology, um, but you need great APIs for them to inter interact with it, tools for them to work with it. Um, you need great code examples so that people can start off very quickly, that they have something to point to. And say, okay, yeah, this is how it works. I'll get ready to go instead of you know, spending two weeks to figure out to, uh, how to do a uh, Hello World. Um, Great education, of course, you need to onboard people um, and let them get a hang of it. And finally, great technical events, such as this one, and, uh, and hackathons, I think are, are really important. Um, just a few um, examples. 
Well, on Technical Foundation, I think there are enough talks and, and sessions, etc., cetera, at this, uh, this event, so we're not gonna go very deep on it. But there's one thought uh, I'd like you to, to um, keep in mind. Um, whenever I talk to people about this, they say, well, Technical Foundation is really the most important, but was the Technical Foundation of the very first version of Bitcoin so great? Well, I don't think it was. I don't think Satoshi was such a great coder at that point, but he did measure, he, she, it, they, uh, managed to attract uh, enormous mindshare ultimately, of the most talented developers in the space. So something happened there. Um, now, APIs and tools, this is what we're up against. Um, the big, um, the fangs, the bats, etc. cetera, um, they, they make it so, so easy for developers to start with something, um, to work with it. Um, uh, when, I, when, I, you know, when I'm a developer and I want to, to build something very powerful, I start with AWS. And I, you know, I have it running in in in, in no time. Um, any new project that's that's sort of um, battles for the attention of that developer is going to be, you know, at least near here. This is this is the gold standard, to my in my view. Um, so, a, a, and a project like Golem, which is quite directly competitive with um, Amazon the Amazon Web Services, is also, you know, compute. Um, for uh, a, a compute, uh, let's say, decentralized cloud computing, um, they'll have to be on that standard or at least near it for, for people to be able to build on it. Um, now, with uh, things like Ethereum, we've come a long way. This was Ethereum coding in 2014. Not so easy. Um, today, it's, it's much easier. Um, still, you know, uh, with things like Truffle, with things like Embark, you can start off pretty pretty quickly. So that's you know that's come a long way. But there's so much more than than Ethereum. So every new project that comes along that has a radically different technology, um, you're back to square one in terms of how hard it is to uh, to start off. Um, now technical events, of course. Um, there's a, there's a, the largest hackathon, largest blockchain chain hackathon um, in the in the world is in the Netherlands. It's a it's a big one. Um, Ethereum, of course, has done great work with their, their DEF CON. Uh, Blockstack did great events, and, and many other technologies are, are putting out real developer-focused conferences. I think that's a really good thing. Um, and, of course, today, very important, Web3 Summit. Um, and code examples. I, I, um, I like to go around on, on you know, various sites of, of, of all the projects and see how, how well they do that. And I don't see a whole lot of them. And I, when, whenever we, uh, whenever I give these talks, I try to stay away from our own portfolio to not, you know, be the one uh, praising, uh, praising the world, uh, praising the word. For this one, I had to, uh, or yeah, out of necessity, uh, do feature a portfolio company because I just couldn't find any others that did it so well. So OrbitDB is the project of uh, higher networks, um, the centralized peer-to-peer -peer database. They have the, the, the classic to-do MVC uh, app. Why do I say classic? Well, because most uh, front-end frameworks and back-end frameworks, they use this, this simple to-do app as sort of an illustrator of how it works. Well, they did that as well. Um, it has um, the code available, and it has a live demo. So you can go to GitHub, you can click, it works. You see it working. You see it working in your browser. How, you know, how, uh, how, more, uh, uh, how much easier do you need to make it for people to, uh, to start with? And you know it just works, syncs up. So that's you know that's the type of thing that I like to see in uh, in any technology in any you know um, developer portal um, for people to get started with. Um, yeah, great education, of course. Um, it's also important that can you know can happen organically within the organization. So you know you hire a new person and you share knowledge, but it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort. Um, so I think uh, things like online programs, RSK Educate is doing, uh, doing some good work there, uh, making that available for free. Um, Consensus Academy, of course, you know, they're doing good things. Of course, they have an, you know, an interest in, in then uh, subsequently hiring the people who come out of it as well. Uh, but you know, um, they're doing good work. Um, and um, yeah, so that's for, for the intro. This is more or less how I... Um, the, the things that I want you to uh, uh, to keep in mind. Um, now, what I'd like to do is, I think we have maybe four, five groups here. Um, is you know uh, mix among each other. Um, let's see how many people we have. 
I think, yeah, I think we have about 20 people. So if we can make groups of four um, sit down and, and from your experience um, discuss some, um, some experiences that you have had in maybe in your practice, maybe in previous practices um, around these things. Like, okay, uh, how, how did you there, uh, how were you able to attract developers? Um, and which challenges did you have? Which challenges do you currently have? And of these things that I mentioned, yeah. Yeah, well, I, yeah, so both the, um, the core technology and the dApp is a good question. Um, because, I mean, building the core technology itself uh, is, you know. Like, attract developers to work if they have to do the team also, or attract developers to open the blockchain in general? And the no, yeah, unless it's from the perspective of uh, letting them work for, uh, build on or work for the company or the project that you work for. That, that's my idea, yes. Indeed. Um, uh, so yeah, so uh, share ideas, uh, make some notes, because otherwise you're gonna forget the only thing. And, and after this, I'm gonna ask you to, uh, one of you of each group to uh, present it to the wider for us to share your ideas. <laughs> Yes. Exactly, exactly. It's a very good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, this is definitely not the classic, uh, I have a startup, I need to recruit people. Yes, okay, that, that forms a small part of it, but it's more I need to recruit, recruit people by, by winning their hearts and minds to build on my uh, probably completely open system. I might never know them. I might never hear from them. But still, they're building on it because of all these things. And Quite likely, uh, I, I mentioned these six core points, quite likely there are other very important things and I want to learn them from you. Um, so, <laughs> um, so that's the idea. Um, so yeah, maybe we can just uh, have uh, one group here, one group at the back here, and then I think about three groups over there. Does that work? Yeah, shake each other's hands and uh, learn about your backgrounds. <laughs> And then in, uh, in 15 minutes, we'll, uh, we'll reconvene.
All right, everyone. Time's up. <laughs> so I'm going to, um, from each of the five groups, <laughs> so from each of the five groups, I'm going to ask one of you to, uh, to step forward and take two minutes to share with the wider group let's say, the two most important points, or one most important point, if you have it, um, that, that came up in the discussion, be it, uh, be it a challenge that you faced, be it a best practice or, or a good idea uh, to attract developers. And um, yeah, and we have a bit of discussion of it. Um, so that would be, let's say, five times two, uh, two minutes, two to three minutes. Um, so let's get going. So who from your group can I invite? Yeah, let's go forward. So for everyone who presents, please quickly say your name and your, uh, your organization that you're uh, mostly affiliated with, and then uh, yeah. get going. Thanks. Thanks. M my name is Emil. Um, I run a small app development agency in Berlin. And my idea is to, to turn it into a dApp development agency. So uh, in the group, we had brilliant people. Carlos is working for um, Consensus. And, and I got to learn a lot from that, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, my team, like all the development team I have, is 100% remote. And I was really energized when I got to learn that Consensus is also a, a, first, a remote first company. And so GitHub and Stack Overflow and a dozen more that you can see. And in the, in the context of attracting developers, uh, what I learned during the time of executing my company and and being a developer re working remote, I, I learned that you can attract very good, talented developers across the globe if it's remote work. Uh, regardless of the time zones, if you, you can utilize the technology, for example, having your <clears throat> calendars uh, time zone, like Calendly, for example, or other solutions out there, and managing your communication channels uh, efficiently, like everyone uses Slack, and, and you, you have subthreads, and, and you have channels for every single thing, and you have a very clear uh, workflow uh, on your Jira, and, and, and everyone knows you have a, an onboarding video tutorial that they, they learn and, and uh, put it, uh, there. Um, and besides all the collaboration tools, I would say, the second thing, uh, that you have a very clear collaboration tool set up, and uh, the, the other would be trust, because it's remote work, and, and they need to um, have a trust on the idea and, and on the team and everything. Uh, the other um, important point I would say is ownership. Um, so besides trust ownership, because uh, if you do not give a developer an ownership of 
I was given this example, for example, if you're building a tender for dogs, <laughs> if you give this ownership of the swipe gesture to one developer, the good thing is that whenever that fails, you know whom to blame or, or whom to reward. And they, when they take ownership and, and they have this trust and love for the company and the idea, then what happens is that no matter what time of the midnight it is, and when it fails, they wake up, they build it, they go back to, to, the, to the bed. And that happened not only to the developers I recruit, but to hundreds of thousands of developers right now working remote. Um, and and they, they feel attached to the idea and, and to what they build. And that's how the Linux Foundation is built on, and that's how all these open source communities are working. So unless you do not reward them or gamify it in a way in your company, uh, that you, you give them this reward and ownership of, of whatever features that they're building. So if I quickly review it, remote first, trust, clear collaboration tools, ownership, um, and, and giving them more um, rewards than, uh, than usual traditional companies. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, from this group, who, who can ask to come forward? <laughs> there you go. Hi, my name's Matt. I work with Aaron. Um, our group uh, took a slightly different route from, from yours, actually. And uh, we were looking at how do you actually a attract developers into the community? And... Um, uh, one of the interesting areas we spoke about was about rituals and routines and about, for instance, uh, when you're new and you're getting into something or if you're trying to build a habit, things like going to the gym, having a buddy to go with or, and making the experience a social one rather than a solo one. So how do you kind of create like clockwork routines like uh, uh, the IoT meetup that you run in, in Sydney? Every single month there's always a thing there. Um, and making that a really accessible, accessible space, welcoming newcomers. You know, getting started resources is one thing, but also how do you make it so that um, people feel that that first tentative contribution that they make is, is valued and, and valid. Um, and then the, the other big area that we spoke about was about um, we are kind of newcomers to this space. Well, we're all newcomers, but we are kind of the, the, the pioneers and the things that motivate us to, to build in this area is, is, is very passion-based, is very focused on uh, our, um, our idealism. But as the space scales, probably that's going to be slightly different and people have different um, uh, values that they, that they use to make decisions. So, you know, ability to accept risk versus stability. You know, how do you make money? And the, the sort of like the impact and the purpose are all sort of different areas, ikigai as a sort of an overall organizing concept, but, um, but uh, things that, that could be useful there is sort of, if you're, if you're going to be making it that sort of decision to move over, how do you demonstrate that it's professionally used, that there are, that there are jobs that are able to be a st stable source of income, maybe not something that's not particularly motivating to, to us or many of us, but to, to other people as, as you're looking to recruit hundreds of thousands or you know, millions of people to build in the area might be more and more important. Um, oh, and then last point about that kind of um, being welcoming, sort of, there's this sort of, um, you know, a lot of tribalism in the space, but from, from an outside, that could be quite um, off-putting and probably also not particularly relevant when everything looks the same from the outside. Um, so how do we get around that? All right. Thanks, Matt. All right. Uh, from the group in the back, who can I ask? Here you go. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dean Tribble from Agoric, and we had a spectrum of... This is a really bright light. <laughs> 
I'll stand over here. We had a spectrum of people. Um, my company has a new smart contracting platform with a different security model and language uh, in a secure subset of JavaScript. We had people that that uh, had someone that um, works on a government group that's attracting people to the projects that they that they sponsor inside the government. We had people solving problems in the Ethereum ecosystem. So it was this broad spectrum. And one of the main points is what it takes to bring people to the different kinds of of, of, of projects is very different. Um, I'll, I'll pick two particular things that came out of this. Um, for the, the Ethereum project, this was this is Meta Cartel, which is, um, I won't go into the details, but the particular thing they have is a standard. They aren't saying, hey, come work on my project, but rather defined a standard that you could come rendezvous around and help us work out the details of. And that gives people something to be able to bring their own project or their own idea or their own need to solve a problem and contribute help. And then if they end up interested in your project or supporting your project, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a big win there. And so that, that concreteness of a standard, or, you know, of, 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 of a, a specific standard to solve a problem that people can really sink their teeth into gives a rendezvous point that people can gather around. So that was one uh, uh, very interesting thing that, 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 that I think a lot of projects could use. You know, even ones where the project is solving some large set of thing, if you can get people to rendezvous about the, around this one thing, that'll bring them in and get them interested. Um, in, in, in my project, it is a secure subset of JavaScript. And so instead of building, you know, instead of trying to get people interested in this new thing, our task will be a lot more like there's 20 million programmers out there. How do we get them, how do we get them interested in our thing the same way they're interested in React or Vue or one of these, you know, language frameworks? And, and Aaron's slide that had a big decentralized gave me a flash for a moment of how games get people interested, where it's not that they have a site, a single site that, that they bring all of their millions of customers to to tell them how to play the game or to get them excited. When they roll out a game, they roll out a package of stuff so that fan sites can create their own uh, work. So instead of just going to this one site, now there are sites popping up all over that have very similar but different material. And people were able to pick, the, pick up this, this game or project or whatever it was and run with it themselves. And I haven't seen that, that, that particular thing be deliberately seated in these environments, but, there, but in the same way that you were showing multiple sites that would teach you about how to do Ethereum, you know, one could imagine deliberately providing material not, not intended directly for the public, but rather intended for the people that wanted to carry it out to the public themselves and get, get a more decentralized education path. So those were the two things that came out of our group here. Great. Yeah, thanks, Ian. All right. Uh, so the group here in the middle. Who can ask, please? Okay. Hi, I'm Dan. Um, I'm a software developer from Berlin. I'll also go over here. Uh, we had uh, Chris in the group and uh, Nicola and, sorry, I forgot your name, who were building a, 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 um, a stream and also um, launched um, their token last year. Um, a, a, sorry, a data stream. And we took another completely different angle on what the question was actually that we were discussing in the group, which I find very interesting that we've had three groups out on stage and we're number four, and I think everyone has taken a bit of a different perspective. And we spoke mainly about if you have something out there that already works, how do you kind of get people rolling with your technology? Um, and what we discussed mainly is um, how to get people using your API, and we discussed kind of how documentation needs to be written uh, to make it super uh, easy to kind of get started. And I spoke a lot of my experience as a developer. It's just simply it needs to be super, super easy. And I gave uh, React Native as a, as a thing, good example where you can really get going and to a hello world in like three to 10 minutes or something like that. Um, Chris is a, a technical writer who also writes documentations. Uh, so he said that sometimes it's not that easy to, uh, to rate things that are, that are easy, especially if you don't have access to the developers. Um, what else did we say? <laughs> and that uh, sometimes if things are open source, it leads to better documentation because it's easier for everyone to contribute to the documentation as well. Um, and I think one, uh, one thing we also said is if there's an ability for people to also provide feedback to your documentation where they kind of get stuck, that that can help improve the documentation um, a lot. I think that's it. Thank you. Cool. Many thanks. All right. And finally, the, the group there at the back. We can ask, come forward.
Yeah, sorry, and it's not a flip over, so but you, you can use this space if you want. <laughs> it's very tiny. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, gestures work, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Should I use the mic? Yes. All right. Hi, um, I'm Mati, uh, Skytail Ventures. We're investors, and we were a group of three investors and one app dep developer. So <laughs> we we've taken again a a bit of a different approach, and we first talked about the issues and. Um, uh, the first issue, which is sort of understandable, and uh, was the uh, the tech. The tech has to be great in order to attract developers. But the second, probably even more important thing, is the developability. So we see in a space now, like even Polka, Definity moving like from EVM to to Wasm, and you just have to have great tools. Um, and um, the third issue was the actual marketing itself. That in crypto or in in our web-free realm, it's a bit different. So um, I think that the traditional channels don't work. So as an investor, if I see a particular project being marketed on Instagram, say it's it's a big turnoff. Um, and then usually these these like word of mouth approaches are the best. So when you when you have a meetup, but I had experiences of throwing meetup, a local meetup, where you know the the dev comes and. He doesn't really care about presenting, and the presenting is pretty bad, and you just you end up not really attracting people to to your project, even though the tech is great, and even though the tools to build on top of it is great. So these are the the challenges that that we've seen, and then moving on to the actual um, attracting people. So I think that we need to move from this zero sum approach where oh, I'm going to steal your developers from, 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 from your protocol to more of a positive sum, where you think about attracting people to the web-free you know, projects, so different protocols. And that's the, the issue of isolatability, or you know, we need interoperability, where when you build on certain protocol, it's not, you know, the use is not restricted to that you know, particular um, walled garden, so that you have this this crypto cosmos where you build on top of something and it's just like, it will transcend the actual protocol itself. And you know, the ways how to, 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 to do it, like we as investors, like we have a opportunity to, for example, put some, to place some of the uh, projects that we invest in into Cisco Academy a curricula, which is pretty cool because you got really like young devs sort of going through this formal process of building on, you know, first blockchain and then, you know, just learning smart contracts and stuff like that. So I think this is also a route that we could all take. So thanks. I guess that's it. Cheers. All right. Many thanks. Many thanks, Mati. And uh, thanks to all the other uh, speakers and uh, groups. Indeed, very interesting that we got five groups and we've got five completely different uh, angles towards the, the question and the problem. Um, so yeah, let's do, do a, a quick uh, recap of, the, of the, the core points, if this works. Oh, oh we go the other way around. That's nice. Um, <laughs> well, I do this. <laughs> no, so um, from top to bottom, uh, we got uh, remote work, uh, making it you know very easy, making it even remote first um, is a good way to attract uh, people and to uh, sort of touch into a wider pool of uh, of people. Um, have a clear uh, setup of your collaboration tools. Know that everyone is. Um, aligned on okay, that's the way you will use it, and not you know some people on Slack, some people on Gitter, some people here, some people there, some people there. I know that's very well from my uh, my own experience as well. It's easy to get uh, get fragmented. Um, have good ownership of of the modules or the, of the different bits that get built by by everyone. Um, uh, take care of rituals and routines because indeed it's not just about onboarding it's about an ongoing process and it's about um, yeah keeping keeping that moving and keeping that flow um, realize that we go from a stage where we're now we're all passionate um, but in the way that you know if, if this grows like we want it to grow there are going to be many people who just want a job um, and they need to be suited uh, as well with their uh, their needs and interests um, and um, be aware of the tribalism that exists in the space, and you know, try to uh, 
manage it or at least not have its uh, its negative effects, which uh, definitely it can uh, can have. Um, look at a way of uh, describing problems in a standard way, um, if I word that correctly, um, to to uh, in able to in order to be able to uh, let people on board with that and uh, look at uh, in terms of documentation and tools, not creating documentation, not creating tools but creating the tool to create the tool, the tool to create the documentation, to create the fan site, to create, um, yeah, so that people, it, I, I'd like it, it, I also heard it from, the, from your group as well a bit, uh, like not focus all your efforts on writing the specific documentation for your project itself, but sort of give the, give the people the, um, what is that? There's the, the 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 corny uh, saying about the fishermen: don't don't give them a fish, but give them uh, <laughs> give them the line so that they can fish themselves, uh, so that you can spread uh, that activity. Um, make documentation very easy to read. Um, indeed, I mean from my experience, uh, uh, that we have you know we have we have a long way to go, I guess, um, and uh, uh, that really enables people to, to get started. And the open source nature to, to documentation, very important one as well. I mean, all this code is open source, and that's nice, and then you get your feedback, and then the, uh, the, the you, ideally it gets to a higher quality. Uh, but for, for documentation, it's exactly the same. You know, be a, let, uh, make it very easy for people to submit a pull request on your, uh, your documentation site. Um, and that way it can improve and improve and improve. Um, yes, there we go. Just want to make that clicker work. <laughs> we can't get away from the consensus academy. <laughs> oh, just keep. Th this is the good message, right? <laughs> Amazing. No, I went forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, you're. That's it. You're. Uh, yeah, keep it here. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. This is good. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, th then uh, finally, you uh, flagged uh, two problems: the developability and tools um, that uh, that are a challenge indeed. Make it very easy to to get for people to get started, uh, and marketing to developers as well. Um, it's uh, I've sometimes had the same experience with like these these things are usually spread out at, at at meetups, at events, and then you have someone presenting their project, and it's well either you know hard to understand or not very enthusiastic. The projects need to realize that every time that they are represented at a meetup, at an event, um, at an online event maybe, it's a marketing uh, it's a marketing event. The moment that a developer stands there is a marketing event and they are in the position to either attract or alienate um, their possi possible uh, future developers and, uh, and adopters. Um, and finally, um, yeah, going from zero sum to interoperability. It's not just your developer that works with your project and that's it. No, let's work to be become more interoperable and make it easier for people to contribute to um, yeah, more, uh, more projects uh, at once to make the, the space as a whole grow. All right, so everybody, thanks very much for all your contributions. Um, I've learned a lot, I hope you have too. And I wish you uh, a splendid Web3 Summit. Thank you.